Today, we're going to continue on with the series of looking at features that Metabox brings, and we're going to take a look at the front-end submission option. Now, this isn't going to be as powerful as a dedicated tool like WS Form, for example, but it is going to give you the ability to be able to add content into your custom post types, custom meta fields, taxonomies, as well as normal WordPress post types and so much more. There's also a really nice little feature that gives you a kind of dashboard that shows all your posts, allows you to edit and delete them. It's very, very simple to install. So let's take a look at how you do it. Now, first of all, this is an extension for Betterbox. So you are going to need to have this extension either purchased or you have it as part of your particular subscription. This is called the MB front end submission. So once you have this installed and activated, which you can do very simply, just come into your dashboard in WordPress, go to extensions, and inside there, you can enable any or all the extensions that you want to use. Just make sure you've got the MB front end submission active and you're good to go. Okay, so once you've got that, I've already created a custom post type called properties and I've created a couple of different fields and associated with it. Let me just quickly show you. I've set up some additional custom fields for the additional property fields. If we open this up, you can see I've got some text fields, image fields for file uploads, some numeric fields. I've also got a group which has the ability to be cloned, kind of like a repeater region that you see inside advanced custom fields. So we want to connect this up and have this as a front end submission form. So let's do that. Let's come over into pages and choose add new. And I'm going to give this a title. We'll publish this page. And now we can use either native Gutenberg functionality or Bricks Builder or Elementor. All of them give you exactly the same end results. I'm going to use Bricks in this example, but the process is pretty much exactly the same. If you come over to the plus in Gutenberg and search for form, inside there you'll see a couple of new options called registration form, login, edit profile, and submission form. These are all additional options that are included as part of Metabox. The same thing applies basically inside Bricks or Elementor. So if we open this up to edit with Bricks, let's just simply add a new section and container in, and inside there we're going to come up to our elements and search for form, and inside there you can see the same thing, login, registration, profile, and submission. We're going to choose the submission option, and we'll take a look at some of the other ones later on in their own dedicated videos, but the process is very similar. Let's add this submission form in, and you see this just pulls in basic info. Now, all the options you can see here on the left-hand side will be exactly the same whether you're using Elementor or you're using native Gutenberg functionality. So nothing is different. I'm just using Bricks because it's my builder of choice. So first of all, you can see we've got some basic info here. Do we want to enable Ajax submission, allow scrolling, allow the ability to edit, delete, force delete, and so on. The object type then allows us to choose from, in this example, post, or we can use a custom model. We're going to use and stick to post because we're just working with a standard WordPress custom post type. Object ID, we don't need to use. Post type, we're going to change this from post, and we're going to choose property, which is the custom post type I've created. As you can see, there's a range of options inside you, so pick what is relevant to you. Which is property, post status, you can choose between the normal draft, pending, and so on. If this was on a live website and you were going to let people access it, I would recommend you put this into either pending review or into draft. For these, though, I'm just going to set it to publish so I can see the results immediately. Then you can choose what post fields you want to pull in. Now, these are the standard WordPress post fields. These are not the custom meta fields that we create inside Metabox. We can choose from title and content, which you can see is already here. You can choose excerpt, date, and thumbnail. Let's just choose thumbnail so we add that into our options and you see that now adds in the option for adding a thumbnail. You can change these options. So if you want to change the title, for example, you can change that from title to property name in this example, content, we'll put as property description. We're not using the other ones and we'll just put this as property thumbnail. Cool. Submit. We'll change that to add property and you can see you've got add new. So we'll say add new and delete. Cool. You can also set a custom redirect if you want to. You can choose what message is there for confirmation and the deletion and so on. If you want to add a recapture key, if you're using Google Recapture, you can do that. So if this is a front end form, like maybe a custom contact form or something, you obviously want to have something to stop that spam where it doesn't require user login. Well, you can use the recapture option if you want to there. So there's the most basic part of this. Let's save this and let's take a quick look. So we check this on the front end. This is what we end up with. Looks particularly horrible, but don't worry about that. We're more interested in how we add the extra fields in. And what we can do is we'll choose our submission form, come over to style, and in layout, we're going to set this to be 100%, just so it fills the full space that we have. We're also going to come into our section and add a bit of space at the top and bottom. There we go. So now it already looks just a little bit better. 
So let's save this. Okay, so how do we actually pull in those extra fields? Well, let's choose our submission form and look at the options we have here. You can see we've got ID. Now, what exactly does that refer to? Well, that, that's the ID of additional fields that we want to add in. So we need to get that information. To do that, we're going to come back out of here. So we're going to go into Metabox, and from there, we're going to choose the Custom Fields option. Now, let's open Custom Fields up. And if we look over the top, you can see ID, Additional Dash Property Dash Fields. Let's copy that from there, and let's go back into our page back in and edit it. So what we need to do now is reselect our submission form, come over to ID and paste that in there. And you see that now pulls in those additional fields for us. So everything has now been pulled in. If you want to add additional ones inside you, so you may have multiple fields, you want to kind of combine various different parts, all you need to do is use a comma and insert the ID for the second, third, fourth, and so on. And all those fields we pulled in in the order you actually supply them inside that ID field. We've only got one though, so that's perfectly fine. Looks a bit ugly inside here. Let's save this. And if we preview it on the front end, you can see this is what we end up with. So it looks pretty cool. You can see we've got the group, which is basically, like I say, like that repeater. So if you want to add more in, we can add more inside here. We can select our icons and so on. So everything looks and works the way you would expect it to. We can add our properties, just picked up those relevant pieces of information and so on. So that's pretty cool. Now, that's the first part. So we can see how we can create these kind of front-end forms. We can add media, for example, choose images you want to upload. You know, you get the idea. We select that from there. There's a property thumbnail. Want to add extra images in, select our files, upload a bunch of files, let those upload for you. It's very simple. You can see it operates in the way you would expect it to. And you could design around this if you wanted to. and It's picking up the styling quite nicely. So you could easily create a really good-looking front-end dashboard for this. So we'll speak of the dashboard, the other option I said about where you could insert the sort of list of all the different, in this example, properties, but posts, whatever you're kind of working with. Let's take a look at how you can use that. For ease, we'll keep everything on the same page. So we're going to add another section in, like we've done before. Let's just add a bit of space around this as well. Move it at the top. Okay, so now we're going to come over and we're going to search for dashboard. And there's our user dashboard. Let's click and insert it. Let's set this again to be 100% width. And you can see this gives us a really simple dashboard. So we select it, come over to our content. We've got some options inside here. So what page we want to use the edit to go to. Well, because you've got this all on one page, we could use the same page. So for simplicity, let's do just that. Obviously, you could set this to go to different pages. Entirely up to you. Choose the option from here, and we'll say Add Property. So that will now, when we choose something from here to edit it, it will automatically jump to this page. Field Group ID, Object Type. So we go to Post, choose the Post Type. Again, you can set your columns inside here as well. It's not as powerful as something you create yourself, but for something they want to get up and running super quickly, it could be more than enough. So for example, instead of title, we can insert property title, date added, for example. You kind of get the idea of how this all works. So now if we go back to our form, we can say allow edit users to edit the post after submitting. So it's up to you if you want to add these extra options in. So you can say you want to allow them to edit it and so on. But let's leave that as it is for now and hit save and let's test it out. So let's take a look at Edinburgh Heights. Choose the option to edit this. It will then reload the page and all the information for Edinburgh Heights is now inserted inside you. So say we'll remove this image, for example. We'll say this has got four bathrooms. We'll set some amenities and add property which should be edit property, but you get the idea. So that's been updated. So if we edit that again, we can see the image is gone, the details have been updated, and our property amenities have that new amenity inserted in there. Now, this is a really simple overview of how you could use this. If you'd like a deeper dive into this, how you could build a simple front-end dashboard with a little bit more style than we see here, let me know in the comment section down below. But hopefully this has shown you that it's another feature you have inside Metabox if you have a full paid account, and this will give you access to some additional features that on simpler sites don't necessarily require a more complex option. But as always, what are your thoughts? Are you a Metabox user? Is this something you use for yourself? Let me know in the comment section below how you use it and anything you'd recommend I take a look at to expand what you can do with this. I'd love to know. And if you're not a Metabox user, let me know what your thoughts are on it anyway. And if you want to learn more about Metabox, you can check out this playlist next. As always, all applicable links are in the description. My name's Paul C. This is WP Tuts. And until next time, take care.